How you doing? I'm Michael Bell, the voice of Duke. Hi, this is Adrienne Palicki, Lady J from G.I. Joe. Hey there, it's Rachel Nichols, a.k.a. Scarlet. And if you're listening... And you're listening to... And you are listening to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe with Greg and Jaren. Yo, Yo Joe. Joe! Got my G.I. Joe's, got my comic books, watching cartoon episodes, watch me go in box, dead stop. Jaren on his toes, watch me going like a whole new world, you never know. On my freaking block, on my block, anything Joe's. Roll my badger in the work today, yes sir, no sir. I can't call this work today, I'm too clutch. Ain't no pun intended, call me sir today. Check the prices out, my collection feeling burnt today. Anything Joe's, Joe's, Joe's. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe. My name is Greg Engel. And I'm Jaron Decker. And we'll be your host today. Today on Anything Joe's, we're talking about Mail Hall Day. We're going to get caught up on some classified stuff that's been coming in, um, some of which we're at all different points in mail <laughs> tracking at this point. Um, but I don't mean to correct you, Greg, but by things coming in, you mean our wallets being relentlessly pummeled into the ground by things arriving at the same time. Yeah, it's been a pretty big uh, disaster in terms of moving things around, things getting declined, and then me being like, well, I have it, you just got to go over here to look for it. Um, <laughs> so I don't have either of the 60th anniversary guys, the like the generic trooper dudes. I know you've had those, taking pictures with them. Seem to really like them. Um, and I don't have my Airborne either, which I know you got early through CMD store. But yeah. my... My Airborne, my Big Boa, and my Quick Kick arrive today, basically. I know you have those in hand, but I do have my Vamp, I do have my Metalhead, and I do have a Techno Viper, so we're going to talk about those first, and then I'll let you kind of hop me up for what I'm getting in the mail later today. <laughs> so let's start with the big boy. Let's get right into the vehicle itself. Let's talk about the Vamp. Um, I did have some problems, like, with reading the blueprints. Like, they wanted you to put this that little wrench that goes back there, like, behind the gun. And I was like, where does this go? I had to, I looked forever and ever, but overall the assembly was pretty straightforward. I mean, a lot of it was done for me. You put this stuff on the front. Um, sorry, that's not the front. You put all this stuff, all this gear like snaps in this place. This stuff snapped on the gun snapped on, et cetera, et cetera. But it was, I mean, it's pretty streamlined. Did you, was your experience roughly the same, your assembly? Yeah. Yeah. It sure was. And then look, yeah. here's the engine. Oh, I did not even know that. <laughs> also, you can take the engine out. I don't know if I can do it physically. Oh, cool. Should have realized that because it's got like, you can actually see it through the slits here that it's actually physically molded. That's awesome. I am notorious for not paying attention to instruction sheets. So anytime they're like, hey, it does this or hey, it shoots a big red Cobra logo on the ground. I'm just like, unless I fiddle with it and then accidentally press a button and it does it, I, I'm, I'm not aware of it. So, Greg, here's the big question before I really dive into this. I've got a second vamp. Do I tear it apart and paint it like a badger? <laughs> That's an expensive <laughs> custom, but I would love to see it. <laughs> I'm not good enough or talented enough. I would take it apart, forget how to put it back together, and have a shell just like <laughs> sitting here forever. That's probably uh, how so the badger no. was designed. <laughs> Don't, don't talk crap. Don't talk crap. <laughs> um, I love this thing. Like, when I first unboxed it, uh, me and my two sons were just, like, rolling it around through the, the floor in the basement. Like, just, like, I mean, full force on it, too. Like, it's it's got some move. The independent suspension, absolutely incredible. Each wheel actually has a little bit of give. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Whoever whoever decided to do that, fantastic. Um I know that some people had the problems with the guns, um, or the, the, the magazines for the, for the, the, uh, machine guns, but, uh, it, it works now. I haven't had any issues since I pulled it out. Well, now I know where they go. Yeah. I feel a lot better about it. I don't know where I was expecting them to go, but on the blueprint, it's, it made it seem like they stayed back here somehow. There's some, some depth drawing problems with the person that was drafting it, but that makes perfect sense. I'm. <laughs> Uh, I'm totally fine with it. I do wish, I do wish this gun looked a little bit more like the actual Vamps gun. I know it's it's mm. close, but we've seen and studied the Vamp a lot in the comic book coverage. 
and so I'm so used to thinking of thinking of it as a remote control device. Although, in yeah. fairness, we've seen it designed where people stand back here also and use it, which I think this lean is leaning more into, despite the fact that there's nothing for them to stand on back here anymore. It does lend itself. I mean, that's in my mind. I'm thinking, yes, a second person would use this gun manually. I, I don't know. The vamp is mysterious. I've seen where someone takes the the like the mag holder off. I think is what it was, mm -hmm. and then they put it on the back and then use that as a stand. I don't think that's how it was designed, but I've seen someone do that. Um, and also, I've seen people who are like, "That's not how the vamp's supposed to be used. It's a it's a remote control." Uh, well, and, I mean, I've fair. Seen, I've seen unless them. you look at some of the comics where it is a remote control and they still have someone standing back there. So yeah, I've seen plenty of different uses. It's like it really is like the hiss of the early days where it fits four, it fits a hundred and four. It just depends on who yeah. was drawing it at that time and what they needed for it. Well, even this, like if you look at like the steps, like. Traditional vehicles, like, if you have one door, you have one step. Mm -hmm. You don't normally have two different steps for one door. Um, like, I mean, I work at a car dealership, so I see a lot of vehicles. I see a lot of off-road vehicles. And they have the same roll uh, rock rails mm -hmm. with the steps on them. And it's the same way. If it's a two-door Bronco, it's got a single foot one foot you to step into whereas if it was a four door you would have two that's a what? weird complaint not even really a complaint it just <laughs> when i was a kid we used to uh you put a figure on the side there would be pegs right here and then you would cram their arm in this crevice right here because there was nothing <laughs> else for them to hang on to and you needed a second stability point i'd love to know if other kids did that so I'm I'm stoked to see the like oh heck handles here for them to hang on to. Yeah. Because yes, I have many memories of me shoving that arm back in that. It's just enough room between the seat and the plastic on the original vamp that it would grab that arm and it would so it would make sure <laughs> So you could when you were playing you'd play rough, right, as a kid and that would ensure that they were hanging on to the vamp. Yeah. I love all the little things into into this. Like the fact that this shovel is removable, you can use it for that. Mm -hmm. You can take these apart if you wanted to use them on a dio piece, the little bags on the front. Um, you can take the engine out. So I've seen some people doing really cool photos, like with it open and so, like clutch down in there, like wrenching on it. The the fact that the lights are all separate. The fact that we have like a jeep like windshield where you can pop it down. <laughs> I didn't and know it did look that through it. <laughs> I'm not good at playing with toys. My toys, man. <laughs> I, um, so that's all extremely cool. I think we are yeah. both in agreement that the vamp is a stone cold killer. Like it's an absolute hit. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking about how I had a little bit of like disillusionment with the classified line and, they, they, and sure they smacked you with the vamp. Sure enough. I should have <laughs> known. I mean, the, the vamp is probably my favorite GI Joe vehicle. So I was excited to see it. And then it's, I mean, I'm just like, wow, it's extremely well done. I want to talk a little bit about the the value versus the hiss. So we're going to just round it up and just say a hundo even for the vamp and clutch. So that's one vehicle and yeah. one figure. The vamp is smaller than the hiss, although not considerably smaller based not on your as comparison. Not as much as I thought. Not as yeah. much as you think. Yeah, you are equating how much you paid for it to what you how large you expect it to be. But as we have broken down many times before, you were also paying for four figures with the his tank, which inflates yeah. your retail cost considerably. So I think it's safe to say that if the his had been released at retail, or if the his gets a release at retail, it's more reasonable to think the tank and a driver could hit for I'm going to say under 150. Do you think that's fair? I think you would have to strip like the lights. Yeah, um, I think that would be the biggest thing, the lights, um, and then not give anything extra. So no extra canopy, no mm -hmm. extra missiles on the side, which is fine. I mean, you don't need that. I mean, I especially the cost of tooling was all paid for. You know, you're not you you don't have to pay for that. So I, it doesn't seem unreasonable. I love the hiss. I think the biggest reason it feels so much bigger when you do have them side by side, because it does feel bigger, is just because you have treads. So the mm -hmm. actual main part of this doesn't isn't really that much bigger. It's just you have those giant treads you're sitting on instead of just putting four wheels on the side. 
I don't, I think it's more than fine. I think you think it's a great idea when you think about it. The HasLab should be something that's limited edition and exclusive to HasLab backers. But it also, I don't think it should prevent that tooling from being used in other ways for, for them to make money. And in this case scenario, I'm trying to create a path to acquiring an army of his tanks that would be cheaper than you know backing it and stripping out the yeah. stuff that's a little bit less uh, of a requirement like yes the ad, the extra add-ons get rid of all that crap that jaron used on his and get, and keep all the stuff that i used on mine <laughs> yeah take the light out the light is definitely like is cool but you could if you use it if you just had one you could use it as like the head of the like uh squadron yeah. i think that all makes really solid sense actually some of the most logical brainstorming that we've ever done on this show look at so, us look. so yeah uh, well, so what i'm getting at is uh, this is uh, i think not a ridiculous ask it's not great and i certainly can't afford to buy more than one i know a lot of you guys did and more power to you i would love to have one of these to keep in the box and i can barely swing this as it is and it's nice to get just the one and be like i'm just going to open it i'm going to check it out i'll put it with the others until i have somewhere to display this stuff i just even now i'm like well there's some of the stuff we're going to talk about that i have in hand i haven't opened yet all right let's move on to i mean you can't sell a vamp without a clutch or if you can you're making a foolish decision Clutch is just like the vamp. I mean, Clutch is probably one of my favorite Joes. One of the favorite. Let me see what your Clutch looks like. So you got his helmet on? Well, I, nope. res I respect that. I'm learning very quickly now through Classified that my Joes don't look like my Joes if they wear their helmets because my, my Joes mm. as a kid did not wear helmets. I either lost them or just was <laughs> like, it doesn't work for me. So when I had Clutch, one of the first things that I was like, this isn't clicking for me. It was because I had his helmet on, and I was like, nah, I was get rid of that." And then I was like, "Okay, we're this is more in line with the clutch that I I know and love." I do think this clutch figure looks very, very good. I mean, like honestly, the head mold is I think is especially sharp. I a uh, it I mean it looks good. It's not you know what I mean. Like the vest is a solid version of how I expect clutch to look. Clutch is not. You know, other than like Mega Marines era, there isn't a lot of deviation in the Clutch's overall style. So I appreciate that they kept that true. There is one thing I'd like to complain about, pictured here finally now, and that's that they decided to give him tattoos. Now you can argue all day long, and I would be hard pressed to argue back that Clutch is a greaser monkey from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's very likely he would have tattoos, and you would be right. Let's take a look at these tattoos and see what they tell me about the character of Clutch. I don't know. I don't have a flipping clue what this is. It looks like two... It might be too close for my camera to... Oh, there it goes. Two racing flags. I gotta block it all. My camera's like, I'll literally focus on anything <laughs> other than this gross tattoo, Greg. Two racing flags... A thing of dice. That's what I would think. I don't know what else it is. It actually looks like he has two small tattoos kind of stacked on top of one another. One of them is raising flags and the other is like... I don't. I mean, again, I don't know. I Get the microscope out, I guess. Alright, so that's the first part of my complaint. Is that I can't tell you what this tattoo even is. And I would need a microscope for that level of detail. Second tattoo, if I can get it to focus in, is... it's. A woman. Yeah, and, like a pinup style. Yeah, and it's got some kind of like, not scissors, but dark, or like throwing knives or something at the bottom. All right, so again, just a, it's just like a, a girl pinup, which is in line with Clutch because he's like a bit of a womanizer. The other one, I really don't. Uh, it's supposed to represent racing. I get it. It's like racing flags or whatever. I'm drawing it out. I just because I just don't like it. I don't like them. They don't look good. The ability to draw at that detail, that small, is not lost on me. The fact that it's kind of lost in the shuffle, like I don't. It's not very clear what it is, and I don't know. I just don't. I guess I just can't summarize it any more clearly than that. My thoughts are. I don't like it. I don't think I don't want Clutch to have tattoos. So again, I, this is probably the first figure I'll actually actively get involved with and try to take the tattoos off. 
I've come to terms with rock and roll, who's represented with tattoos a lot. But these don't make, these just look cluttered to me. It's like two tattoos on top of one another. And they're, it seems like they're there just because there was a space there. And I'm getting tired of that. I don't want every single character to have a tattoo. Um, sorry, that's my biggest complaint. It's really, it's actually not that big of a complaint at all. Uh, and I love the overall figure of Clutch uh, a lot. I just, I'll let you know when I get those tattoos off how much more I love them. <laughs> Jaron, what are your thoughts? On the I, love the this, I love the design of this figure. The problem I have is with my specific figure and the execution of him. Uh, first off, I agree with you on everything that's great about this figure, except for I do like the tattoos. I can't 100% make out what everything is, but I can't make out what everybody's tattoos in real life are. I'm gonna so, throw up. I'm gonna throw up a close-up picture of that tattoo, and it says Jaren sucks, and you already publicly <laughs> said you love it. Good job. Well, oh well. Uh, <laughs> so my problem with this figure, and you can kind of see, is the one arm. He's just too jacked, and it will not come down. I don't get that. Look at dude. This is rare. Mine are usually the ones that have the most problems, and mine is good, man. Good to go. Pump it, baby. Oh, oh, oh. My arm is working <laughs> great, son. Uh, no, so dude. I... Looking, looking at it, it looks like there's just a little bit. I don't know if it was like extra, extra plastic in this joint. It's just this joint. There's two mm. spots where there's just a little bit of extra. And so I've been working on it, and, I mean, I can get it most of the way there, but it's still not. I hate that, dude. I hate that. Quality control has been better lately, I would say, than normal, but there's still these weird isolated instances that pop up, and they set everything crazy. It's when you start seeing, like, stuff where everybody's, everybody's cover girl's arm pops off you know what i mean like that's when i'm like you got a real problem the uh, it doesn't drive me if i get if i open this techno viper which is who we're getting ready to talk about and he's got something wrong with him like that i i'll i just shrug it off i'm like i'll get another one if it really bothers me but i'm doing so little with these figures right now I just am like, don't worry about it. Just don't. Unless it's like where his arm is like permanently stuck in a super weird position. <laughs> and then I'm I'm like, okay, as long as he can kind of, as long as you can assume a, some kind of pose, we're good. Yeah. Right. I just put mine with like his forearm kind of on the, you know, he's kind of like, Hey ladies. Hey, I'm baby. Cool. Do you see my lame <laughs> tattoos? <laughs> Maybe that's what it's supposed Kim. to be. Clutch is kind of constantly being bombarded for being a bit of a bozo. Maybe they're supposed to be lame, so he's constantly getting talked about. Anyway, that's the vamp. The vamp is great. The vamp is good. Uh, people have been a little wiggly on value, but I think if you subtract the twenty four ninety nine for Clutch, it's about as good as it's going to get, folks. I don't think complaining about it's going to get them to lower the value, and if you stop buying them, they're just going to stop making them. So you're either in or you're out. And I get it. If you, I mean, it was. It's always a tough swing with this stuff. And they're never like, hey, here's a three-month break between the vehicles and figures. I've got literally five figures in the mail on top of this thing. So I'm, all, I'm always going to find room in an episode to complain about get, just getting absolutely launched on this stuff. They, must, they, either, they either think it's hilarious that they're like, these poor boys just can't keep up or we're just gonna, they're going <laughs> to miss a figure. Or they're like, these guys complain so much, they must be filthy rich and they get everything they've ever wanted in life. So let's just keep throwing it at them. But, I mean, I yeah. know we've talked about it before, but I'm, I'm finally officially behind. I've missed the, the Python Patrol stuff. But like for me, yeah. it's just a term of budgeting. Like, Do I get the cool new figures coming out? Do I get the vamp? Or do I go get a repaint of the Trouble Bubble, which is cool. I like the Python Patrol stuff, but it's not stuff I don't have. I like the Python Patrol co Copperhead, but I've got a Copperhead. I don't have a clutch. I don't have a vamp. I want those. Yeah, I'm the same way. I miss those as well. It really does come down to eventually you reach a point where you've hit the wall. It's no longer a matter of, oh, this is putting me in debt. It's a matter of, there, I have no more debt to, for you to take from. I just simply can't have it like a spoiled child. So, Hey, I've, real quick, before we move on to the, from the vamp, uh, get yours up and, and, and move the little gear shifter. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. 
I really so haven't cool. I really haven't played around with it a whole lot. Um, but I'm ecstatic to have it. I'm I'm in many ways more excited to have this than I am the hiss. I know the hiss is a huge the hiss is and still is daunting to look at and just behold, basically. It's something I never thought in my your, lifetime we'd see. I've got our next uh our next thumbnail for this for this episode. I'll go <gasps> Vamp better than his <laughs> right. Greg um, says so. Uh but the vamp is more aesthetically like I just am I enjoy I, I have ideas for it. Like I'm not really a photo guy and the vamp it's, you know, I got, that's how I am with toys. I get a toy I, and I start playing, I play with the toy either physically or in my head. And sure enough, as soon as I got it out, I was like, Oh, I, this would be a great shot. Even though I have literally no technical merits to achieve that shot. I do have an idea <laughs> of a great shot. I sound like back when we ran a video game store, I sound like the guys that would come in and go, Hey, how do you get in touch with the guys for video games? I got a great idea for a video game. That's not, that's not a job. There's not a, you don't go into EA sports and be like, Hey man, what you come up with a great game today to earn your salary. And the guy's like, Hmm, Madden 25. Cha -ching! <laughs> All right. Next up on the list. <sighs> the only other thing that I've gotten in, it's going to be a weird day for me. Cause I'll be watching this video as a, probably as I'm opening the figures that we're getting ready to talk about. The other thing I was able to get in is the Techno Viper. I missed out on the Hasbro Pulse. We talk a lot about the Hasbro Pulse pre-orders usually go live at a time when I'm asleep because of my job. And lately, I've really just not been sweating it. I'll just wake up and get what's there. And the Techno Viper is, is the one thing that sold out, as I guess you would expect. It's a pretty notorious troop builder. I was able to pick this one up from Amazon, which speaks merits, again, about who you choose to purchase your product from because I got, you know, my Hasbro Pulse stuff is the stuff that's arriving tomorrow. And um, I haven't even opened them. I got to be honest, like, right out of the boxes, we're talking about the review. The Techno Viper is not a strong troop builder for me. I like the idea of him because he's like a technical guy and it makes sense that they would, you know, televipers are supposed to be like communication dudes. So it makes sense that techno vipers would be more like, I mean, I could run the gauntlet of vipers, but I typically associate them with computer use. Again, televipers, I feel like televipers fall under that criteria as well, as well because they're constantly like the security monitoring dudes. But I, again, I think that's just like security monitor guys. They don't have the like actual expertise to repair stuff, which is a very long way of saying that's what I think Techno Vipers do, which is not a very exciting job, but a greatly designed figure. And all that to say that I still have an open mind. So, Jaron, tell me what I'm in for. Well, first off, in my own little headcanon universe of G.I. Joe, there's only one Techno Viper. Oh. <laughs> because I think it's just hilarious. Like, Fred, like, uh... Fred, we need you on level 7, 13, 42, and we also need you in Sierra Gordo as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, please submit a ticket. He'll be with you uh, as soon as he gets away from Cobra Commander. And <laughs> so he's just, like, constantly, like, fixing the hiss. And he's like, okay, don't go taking this one underwater. It's not <laughs> yeah. a boat. It will short I'm circuit go immediately. Fix these other problems. <laughs> and he turns around and they're just what? like skipping it in, in the river. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let this laser cannon fall upwards and destroy the base of your own. It'll it will not liquefy <laughs> flesh, but it will immediately destroy concrete. That's just how I designed yeah. it. <laughs> um, no, I love this figure, and it's it's got such a unique design the purple was the figure that we should have got for the hiss tank the mm -hmm. purple it's what we should have been winning but instead we had to stick with the basis basic black and white it's it's how it is i get it but i have to get off that because we've already got the figure in i can't change the outcome but you guys voted wrong the purple was cooler but still this figure is so cool i love that they they kept the little all the little uh tools fitting right into the backpack He's got this like kind of like a really cool overlay that comes out of his out of his wrist. Big but fan. It of, goes on either. Big fan of that. The like hologram readout. I'm I'm into yeah. that a lot. And you can put it on either wrist. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can 
you know, switch, mix and, mix and match. Um, I don't, I don't know what his gun does, but it's not on there. But I have it. Hmm. But I don't you know. know I, I don't know it's, they, what it's it, intended for. It looks a lot like a V1 Techno Viper gun, and I would be hard pressed to tell you what that gun did. Also, it's extremely the V. It they they've actually streamlined that a lot. The V1 gun is really really like hyper futuristic, like what 1980s thinks 2020 was going to look like type gun. Mm-hmm. I had always used it as a laser beam or maybe even a freeze beam or something kind of weird. Being techno vipers, I thought I don't know. Maybe they have access to advanced technologies or even like prototype weaponry. You you don't commonly see a techno viper in combat ever, so it could also be something like maybe a welding laser, maybe some kind of like vacuum. I, I mean, like I'm gonna assume it's could not be anything. It could be anything, uh, and I'm just no president right now. I'm sure somebody out there has seen and knows what that is. It's like documented in the file card or something if you know for sure what it is leave a comment i will trust you but if you're lying i'll find you and i'll and we'll never I'll, trust you again i'll shrink wrap you with that techno viper gun no i used it as a laser <laughs> then because they fought but now as an adult thinking through it i'm like i bet it's like a welding laser or something to for repair work specifically the hose backs that up too that it would be laser or you know vacuum power yeah. something that needs a secondary set of power and also, the, yeah, all, everything a, else, everything else they carry is a tool. It's like wrenches and stuff. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, the one thing that I think this is cool, and there might not be another person in all of the GI Joe fandom that agrees with me. It's not going to be the first time, but mm-hmm. this mask is what I feel like somehow influenced Bionicle. If you know what Bionicle is, the Legos, the little sure. dudes with the masks. This mask. Makes me think of Lego more than any other <laughs> fictional mask ever. Um, but yeah, I love this figure. I love the little the little gear that they gave him. I love that he does have a sidearm. So if he does need to shoot someone that just won't listen and take a ticket and get out of here, he can. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. The the He actually is a little bit more maneuverable than I would have thought he would have been. Mm. He's got like really nice posability. The... Um, the oh, what are these things called pauldrons they have like kind of like a clasp underneath so they move you can't really see it but oh yeah so they will move up out of the way so if you need him to do a high five or you know, whatever <laughs> he needs to do he can he's the only one great job fred <laughs> thanks fred <laughs> good thing my pauldrons move so i can do this <laughs> I, I need to buy another one so that i can say there's two oh it's a clone <laughs> of course of course yeah yeah All right. he's just like all right, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> let's Clock move on. Out. Let's move on to two figures that I am actually very excited to open later today. Uh, Jaron, you it's your show, buddy. You tell me who's coming up. Surprise me. Uh, let's go with Quick Kick. Rad. Quick Kick is the most the figure I'm the most excited about from this wave. We've been talking a lot about Quick Kick lately because he was in the cartoon and he's a character that we've kind of you're getting introduced. I'm kind of reintroducing myself to him. And it's a figure that I wouldn't have expected to hit the classified line at this point. He is often forgotten and often pushed back. And it's because of that that I'm starting to like, it's reinvigorating me. I am very excited for this figure. So please tell me, does it deliver? I like this figure a whole lot. I really do. Um, There's a couple really minor things and it's very, very minor. Well, there's a couple very minor things and one a little less minor, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, so first off, the accessories that he comes with, fantastic. He's got a backpack, put the swords in it. He's got two different pairs of nunchucks. He's got the, uh, what's the what's the chocolate? The... Frozen Fudgy Bar. Can you sing the Frozen Fudgy Bar song? And, and, no. dang, I was going to say, I'll give you a prize if you can. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> dang, would it have been a Frozen Fudgy Bar? I would have somehow, you'd somehow be surprised. remembered it. You'd be surprised this, the amount of G.I. Joe garbage that I can just <laughs> randomly dig up on the spot. If you put me on a, if somebody was like, Greg, within arm's reach, produce random weird G.I. Joe stuff, no problem. I mean, just look at the <laughs> uh, my clutter on the side here. You never know what's going to pop up. <laughs> Sorry, continue. So, no. Uh, I love that he comes with all that stuff. He's got alternate hands. He's got, like, punching hands and, like, ninja chopping hands. Great. Really smart. He comes with, like, the flying, like, uh, I almost said nunchuck, and, uh, like a ninja star. Mm-hmm. There you go. Shuriken. There you go. I'm getting Ooh, more official. There we are. Level um, up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so he comes with that with it has like a throwing motion, which is mm-hmm. cool, uh, and that's what the hands that he come that are already in there have that kind of grip to grab it. Uh, the only the the minor complaint that I have is like on the bottom of this foot, and you might not be able to see it, but that's where they put some of the numbers. Uh. And it's just weird that he's he's got like an Andy, basically <laughs> stamped in on the bottom of his foot. So like mm. I was posing him, playing with him and Big Bo outside, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have him doing like a front kick, and then I was like, oh well, got to switch the legs. That is Can't put that one up. Unfortunate. You know they used to do the inner thigh, but that on well, this one kick. has it on the inner thigh as well. Huh. That's why it's so strange. Yeah, that is a bummer because. Yeah, you're you've nailed it exactly. His foot is a prominent point of many much photography. Um, yeah. But maybe it's one of those things where they're all like that, and they just can't change like the policy for it. I know that seems lame, yeah. but or may I mean it could have just been nobody thought it through that far. That's again another thing I like about Quick Kick. A lot of great like karate stuff. Snake Eyes Ninjas. You don't always get the like true martial arts stuff, but you have no excuse not to. With characters like Quick Kick and Jinx, another figure I'm excited to see toy photography with. So I like that yeah. a lot. So, um, look, sorry, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. What's, what's up? I was just going to ask, you know, I'm very interested in what we get for our value at twenty four ninety nine now. Especially mm-hmm. with um, Metalhead, um, which who we forgot to talk about. <laughs> that's that's the third That's the third, okay. Yeah. Um, when you have characters that are like deluxe packaging now, like Snow Job, I'm always interested in getting the most for the twenty four ninety nine price point at this at this time. And I do think seeing Quick Kick that I lean more into the like karate chop hands, the throwing stars. I would rather have more stuff like that than more weaponry, basically. Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, when I open a figure up, I would, no matter who it is, I'm like, you, other than sidearms, I'm like, I'm going to find one gun for you. The gun that mostly resembles your primary weapon. And if you didn't come with it, I'll get it somewhere else. I'm not a tethered to what your loadout was, basically. And so with Quick Kick, I think, and Quick Kick, you know, does, didn't come with a lot of weaponry to begin with. It's all mar- no guns. So it makes sense that he would come with more stuff like that. I would like to see more of that. And I'm pleased that they didn't push him into that middle grade like Kamakura, Sergeant Slaughter, not a deluxe, but not 24.99 price point either. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important that we question and scrutinize what we are getting with each price point because things are so prohibitively expensive for us right now. I just let me like here. I'm, there's a couple of checks and balances I want to make sure that you are not just flat out robbing us, you know, or yeah. or giving us too much here and too much there. And I think Quick Kick is a good balance of that. I like and will use the stuff that Quick Kick comes with. Yeah, I think they, I mean, I think he's probably one of the best ones in the line because the alternate hands are things that actually help. They're mm-hmm. things that if I want him punching something, I don't want him doing it like this. I want him punching. If I have him karate chopping, I don't want to have to take his hands that are like this and stretch them out so that they're like this. Uh, so, so that kind of stuff. Plus an alternate head. I like alternate heads. Alternate heads can be really nice. Now, granted, if they're like doing crazy screams, I'll never use them. But <laughs> at least, you know, you have it. Um, so the other minor gripe that I have with him is he's just too jacked. So he kind of he kind of just by nature has right. the, the same arms as Clutch, where his, his arms just kind of stay out a little bit. And that's because yeah. his shoulders don't come out. I don't uh, know if it's just that. the butterfly joint is too deep, but his yeah. shoulders kind of run straight in, so you can't get it over his like whatever the mm. like muscles under here are, which I don't have, but he does in abundance. <laughs> I so... do, but I'm choosing not to show them ever. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> I uh, I have to assume that that some of that is because skin tone is so much more. <sighs> the flaws in butterfly joints are more, you're more visible when you're trying to look at it as skin, because it, if I look yeah. at this and it's like, like a, a shirt, I'm like, eh, it's just like a fold in the cloth. But when I see skin, I'm like, Nope, you look like you've been assembled and that breaks the illusion a little bit. So I would have to yeah. assume that's part of the decision to make it, but it is still a bummer. He's probably jacked because he's like, I, what have I got to do to become the most used ninja in everybody's collection? And so he's just been like, <laughs> prison mic and working out all the time and now he's like beefcake (laughs) 
Well, he does have one thing that a lot of the ninjas have had for some reason, mm. and that is a lack of cut at the shin. Uh, I don't know why they keep doing this to me. They did it with the original Storm Shadow, the Amazon exclusive. Yeah. They don't give me a, a, a shin cut. So if I want to alternate them, I have to do it all the way up at the thigh. I can't just make like a little twist mm. here. I have to do it all the way up. So then his knee's sideways. And it's... It's just like, I don't know, like I could, there's enough material here, I could cut it and make it. I'm not going to do that, because that's a lot of work, and I'm not that talented. But physically, I could make it happen, and it's just, I don't know why they did it, I don't know, and there might be a valid reason. It's just not something that I understand. Like, I like that there's some there's some weight to the pants, because it helps if you want to stand them. I think he's a figure you could stand on one foot. I really think so. I had him outside in a windy day today, and I was getting pretty close to having him standing. So <laughs> I think it's definitely possible. But like just that little little cut. That's not that can't be that much tooling. Just one right there so that I can twist it a little bit to give him a little bit of a turn on his heel instead of having to turn him all the way up at his thigh. It just Yeah. It, it, I don't understand. The only thing I can think of, and this is not an excuse, but just logically, maybe Quick Kick was a very early designed figure, and it was before they started implementing that stuff, and he got pushed to the back burner for whatever reason. Well, Based but he's on, got double jointed uh, elbows. I don't know. I'm just I come just wanna, on, Greg. St- I'm just, stop, I just want to know. Stop trying to be nice. I. Um, the only complaint I have about that figure based visually, other than the stuff that you've brought up, I'll have to like see it in hand, is that, and I said this when they revealed him, the alternate head does nothing for me. The alternate head is might as well be called extra same head because he's not, <laughs> it's not different. I would have rather had, the, I would have rather had the yelling expression that I know I wouldn't use because why, I'm, it literally is just like if I lose one, I've got another one. I don't, I love, I think alternate head is a great, extra option especially at this price point big boa is a perfect example of a character that absolutely should have an alternate head figures that yeah. have masked helmets should have alternate heads but looking at I'd, you barbecue i'd like I'd, yeah i'd like for there to be some a little bit more um variety otherwise why include yeah so yeah i'm ex- i'm still very excited to see that figure it's a figure that i will actually try to get out and do some posing with just to see if i can get him to do some some karate. <laughs> All right, what's up next? Next up is the guy who I was having him pose with is Big Boa. Look at this! Look at this dude. Yeah, that looks look awesome. at how huge he is. I mean, he's 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 very big. I would have to. I haven't done size comparisons, but I'd say he's easily roadblock and gung ho, if not Sarge big. Like, I mean, I don't. I haven't done a full on size comparison, but he's he's very large. And you know what he has? Look at this. I can turn him <laughs> at his shins. Whoa, you're you're a hosed quick kick. You ain't never gonna <laughs> you ain't never seen these moves coming, baby. I do think it's awesome that Big Bo and Quick Kick are releasing at the same wave at the same time because they're two basically like mar- not martial artists, big like that's maybe a stretch for Big Boa. They're hand to hand fighters or at least close quarters yeah. combat. And so boom, you got it's like buying a two pack, you know, like famous heroes and villains. You've got somebody to play with or pose with right out of the box. What are your yeah. overall thoughts on Big Boa, a character I know we have not really not talked about at all? So I'm sure he's he's somewhat new to you. So this is what this was the one in the in this wave where I was just like, "Hey, it's big guy, cool." <laughs> I'm not. I don't really care. And then I got him out, and I was like, "Oh, this is really cool. Like yeah. this is like he's he's a really cool like I love this alternate head. It's it's <laughs> so like." Just out there, like I don't understand that. Like, sorry, he's got spikes. He's got a breather for some reason. Yeah, that. So that helmet does not come off, right? The helmet is the entire headpiece. No. Yes. Yeah, it is the head. Okay, cool. I don't know why he has the breather either. They, the vintage figure has that rebreather on it. Also, it's uh, I guess choose your own adventure. It's either he can breathe underwater. He maybe it's like. Uh, it, maybe he has some kind of purified oxygen, like to keep him fighting, like help keep him conscious. Third option, it's like venom for Bane, and it makes him bigger, stronger, pushes him like, um, yeah, like Valor versus Venom. I'm very creative tonight. We should write some Did you? Stories. I mean, I'm gonna put you should, absolutely. I'm throwing down some no prizes, baby. Welcome to GI Joe, <laughs> GI Joe fictional world. So, um. 
what what accessories does he come with? Big Bo has always come, been notorious for coming with a bunch of basically workout equipment. I don't think he's ever come with a gun. Yeah, not no that guns. there are a ton of Big Boas out there. He's got two ninety pound dumbbells. Yep, that's pretty standard. Which are very cool. He's got the alternate head that makes him look almost like Rocky. Mm-hmm. Wink. Oh yeah, that's weird. That's a weird. <laughs> They're making a lot of executive decisions on what people look like without their mask on. People that we've never seen before. And I'm like, ah, gonna... Well, isn't isn't that what he was originally supposed to be? Was Rocky and then they... Is, so, sources vary. Is that just the... Is that just the this is, I, this one is what story? I, this is what I know for a fact. They were planning to release a Rocky Balboa figure. It made it all the way through the design phase. It even showed up in one of the comic books that showcased file cards. Uh, Sylvester Stallone just happened to be doing a Rocky car- or a, a Rambo cartoon at the same time, and they wanted to release action figures based around that. So they said, "Sorry, Hasbro, you cannot use his likeness. Anything he owns, blah 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 blah." And so, yes, I I cannot confirm the rest of this, but I think what happens is at some point that pivoted to like the very next year they they turned him into Big Boa, and maybe that's what that's supposed to be a nod to. It doesn't look a lot like Sly, but I call him Sly because we're buddies. I, but uh, yeah. it could be that they only wanted it to look a little bit like him, so they didn't get in trouble with like the estate yeah. or whatever. So yeah, I don't think it looks like very much like him, but mm-hmm. I think he has like similar. Like he looks like he he looks like the character Rocky. Yeah. If he was like described in a book, you could make this face, and you could make Sly's face. Um, it's- it's funny because there's characters like that that I have never really thought about what they look like under the mask. And then there's characters like, I mean, Snake Eyes is not a great example because we already kind of know what he looks like. But there are characters that I think about, like Beachhead is a great example. Beachhead is a guy mm. that does, there's no mystery to his face. He's not disfigured or it's not like a personal choice. He just always wears the little mask thing. And so he's just a regular dude who gets a clock out and not have to worry about. Anything. But I have often been like, "What does this guy look like, really?" Think about that voice and then put a face to it. So it's funny how stuff like that works out. I don't. I really have a problem with that big bow head. It's just I'm just like shocked at how many like unmasked people we're seeing for the first time. Yeah. So this he also comes with like the boxing glove hand, mm-hmm. or the or just the like wrapped up hands that have like blood splatter on it. Yeah. And then, the boxing glove hands have like a, a like a cuff link almost, um, just to make it a little bit more looking more like a boxing glove. Another great figure uh, at the twenty four ninety nine value point, in my opinion. Again, I'm going to lean into this stuff over weapons any day. You guys already probably have enough extra guns that you don't need anymore, so I'm saying let's give them that let's give them let's encourage them when they do it right <laughs> this stuff goes a long way in my opinion towards making the figure more playable more it's more entertaining to have just more stuff you can do with it so you don't need another one yeah. in the next two years when they retro it out all right we got one left <laughs> one left and this is the one that comes with a whole ton of stuff but you had to pay for it so yes i do have a bit to say about this guy because i i forgot that i actually have him this dude. It's Metalhead. You, of course, would put that janky creature from the Black Lagoon looking helmet on him. <laughs> he looks insane. I mean, like, more okay. so than normal. I was going to say, what else he, would yeah. you, what would clue you in that he's insane? So, okay, I got, I'm not, I'm not going to use that helmet. I have no issues with it. We've talked about towing the line between inventing new things to go with the line versus keeping it faithful. And they've done both of those things here. And I'm giving you a hard time. I'm actually glad that you like it. In a very real way, Jaron, you are discovering parts of the G.I. Joe universe that are yours. This did not exist before this figure. And so the fact that you've liked it and adapted it into your, like what I call it, your G.I. Joe universe, I think is exciting. In the same way where we listen to people that grow up that grew up in the awkward years, the like Valor versus Venom stuff, those guys have a completely different I imagine it of like how their G.I. Joe universe works. And I hit I'm here for it, man. Everybody everybody's got even the you know, the sixties guys that have the big twelve inch figures and they're rocking their yeah. universe. I'm here for all of it, buddy. So I'm I'm giving you a hard time because it's funny. I'm glad you have something that you like and is yours. It's not for me. 
But I'm glad that there are people out there that it is for. It's not a miss. Let me I tell mean, you what it's is wild. Let me tell you what is a miss on this figure. I have this figure, so I can talk about him a lot. Um, they there's so many little things about this figure that could have been executed better, in my opinion. And I'll start with I'm being very I'm very I'm being very minimal. I'm like really focusing in on very minimal things here. This red is off. I think this red should be a brighter, cherrier red to match the V1 figure. And I say that because there's so much gray and black on this figure, it does not pop at all. We, I know that we don't have to go into the neon years, but even in terms of OG-13 green figures, this figure is very bland. So bland that they had to strap rocket launchers to every bendable part on him to make him look mm -hmm, like he's mm -hmm. more exciting. I think if this red had been a brighter, more hyper color, it would have salvaged some of that. Or maybe it had had more red on it. I do not have anything to say about the guns at all. I could not care less. The other, the V1 melee came with a small, stupid gun, and I don't care about that either. <laughs> Why would I when he has four rocket launchers that he's using at any given time? The rocket launcher packs are, they have done their homework to try to make it a faithful V1. It's actually on a peg that you can pivot and it just pops in. I do not love this. I don't know that there is a better way to pose these rockets than this, but it does feel like just like a V1 metal head, these will break off. I'll pull one off so you can see what it looks like <laughs> without. If I can, that's how it looks awkward without it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that would be the first thing, right? You can't not have them because otherwise explain that at, at your local urgent care because it's <laughs> going to be because uh, it's problematic. And yes, I am concerned about a line that sometimes has issues with quality control, not making these durable enough to endure hitting something in storage, falling off the shelf while attached. Too much exposure to heat. I, my daughter getting a hold of it for any reason whatsoever. I, there's a laundry list of things why I think that's not going to be safe. I understand why you did it. You wanted it to be faithful mm -hmm. to the V1, but I don't think it's going to work in the long run. The missiles themselves, since I'm taking this bad boy apart, and why not? It's safer that way. The missiles themselves consist of each individual missile detaches, and there's also a launch effect that you can unplug. I won't do it because it's actually a very snug fit and I give it a thumbs up because it looks and works great. This part of it is all solid. The rocket launcher part of it is good. Plugs in well. The cord attaches to it. And the missiles plug in. No issues. The hose that plugs into the backpack, I could take it or leave it. It probably should be more bendable. If you look at it here, you can see that it just doesn't stay attached to the rocket launcher part very well and, I mean, isn't great it's in the middle if you attach it it will probably stay attached but if you move it it falls any of the above it's good they're going to come loose the rocket launcher in the back um suffers from similar problems actually the backpack itself is is totally fine the independent nature of the like missiles is wild this seems like something that in 10 years will not be able to support itself the plastic will wear it will start to hang loose and the weight of these missile launchers will be out of control. You will not be able to do anything other than that. But I will give them props for it's very poseable. You can strike many, many, many poses with it. It is very hard to make them look like they're both going the same way because, because of that. And that's a bummer because it does make it look like he's firing wildly everywhere at all times. That summarizes my thoughts on the figure. Um, uh, you know, the figure itself is very unremarkable and a big part of that I think is the paint scheme. I do think the head mold is good. The head that I'm using is solid. Also, uh, I almost forgot to note this, but I've been talking a lot about sunglasses or glassware in general and how it doesn't stay on figures. And if it doesn't, maybe don't do it. And Metalhead has the perfect solution because it's attached to his hair. So when you pull it off, if I can pull it off. I still haven't put that head on it. Not only can you see him without his glasses, but yeah, it's part of the hair. And as a result of that, it has tremendous stability when you're putting mm. it on. The hair has to go in a certain position, and because of that, the glasses do too. Boom, that's a thumbs up. I like that a lot. Let's see some more of that. 
that's actually a better my thought on it was don't do it because you guys aren't really getting it right you guys took it one step further and said, we can do it right. And this is one way that maybe that would work. I would like to see more of this. I know not every figure is going to come with interchangeable hair, so it might not be feasible. But this is good thinking, and I would like to reward that. With this thumbs up. Two thumbs up. It's not a bad figure, there, but there are opportunities there. And quite frankly, it's in a line that makes it look worse. And is the highest price point figure, not including clutch, obviously, so I've paid the most, and it's the most disappointing for, per cost, quite frankly. It's, I mean, not even per cost. The twenty four ninety nine figures across the board are all better. That Airborne would be the only other figure I'd stack it up with, and he also will arrive today for me as well. We didn't mention this, and Jaren, I'm getting ready to cut you loose on this metalhead, but uh, my Retro Recondo is on the way also. I don't know if you got a notification for that, but... I did. Um, I'm really excited for this one because I didn't, I have not opened my Tiger Force one because I, I didn't, I wasn't interested in that. So this will, I'm actually real excited to be able to mess around with this normal paint scheme Recondo. And I'm pleased yeah, that well, it was. Well, really the retros in general. Yeah, just, I mean, I know that Duke and that Scarlet are hitting. I have not gotten that announcement and I can wait until payday, quite frankly. But I am very excited to see them in hand. That Scarlet, especially, I, I love Scarlet. Uh, so I can't wait to see that figure. And I think that Duke is, is a needed addition, like with everything else being yeah. so faithful to the V1. All right, sorry. I can't I, wait. I, sorry to, to keep touching on this, and then we can go back to Metalhead. The Duke V1, I originally, when it was announced, I was like, oh, I love these Dukes that I have already. and I, I, I mean, I love it. But the more I see people fo post pictures of this retro Duke, the more I'm like, okay. I need it. I really want it now. So the more they lean into the vintage, we're not really going to change much at all. The more I have it just accepted that that's where we're at. Uh, I like some innovation, but I'm happy with this too. I'm a very, I mean, I think we know this. I'm a very easy to please G.I. Joe fan. It's part of why I love it because it doesn't, I'm, I don't take many things too seriously about it. So I'm good either way. I, I liked the old ones, and I will not keep that Duke and Scarlet out. Not not only because I, I like the way we're going with the designs, but also that was the very first figures, and we have already come a long way from there. And just in terms of the advancements that Hasbro has made in the technology with the creation of the figures, they look better for multiple reasons, not just because they look like the you know the version I had as a kid. They yeah. so. You, I mean, I would argue that they could take the vintage figures and make alternate versions of them that look completely different, and there would be an appeal for that. Give the outspoken fans what they want now, and then later, especially as we deplete the heavy hitters of the line, and you have to go back to the well, be like, all right, now here's all night ops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's in super stealth gear, reimagined. I'm really giving away a lot of good money ideas. TM, TM, TM. Yeah. Ninja, G.I. Joe Ninja Force Redux. TM, TM, TM. They would never call it that because that sucks, but it's too late. I copied it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, do you, Jaren, do you ever heard, when I was a kid, they used to say this, that if you ever came up with a great idea and you obviously you couldn't copyright it, you would write it down and mail it to yourself and the postmark oh. on the letter would prove that you created it before them. I never do not, that. I'm, um, I do not know if that's true. I doubt it would hold up in court, but I always that is something that comes back to me a lot. I think about it. Anyway, what I'm writing down right now is G.I. Joe Ninja Force Redux. Go back to the well. Re all modernized new characters that I don't own and have absolutely no rights to at all. Boom. Own it. Mail it to myself. Put it in the mailbox tomorrow. By the time you guys listen to it, I'm already getting it in that mailbox today. No swapper, no swapping. Sorry. Uh... Let's talk about Metalhead. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> Which, granted, they do need to go ahead and do Star Brigade for every single figure. Everyone. Just redo the whole line in Star Brigade. Let's do it. Let's see how uh, long we last. So, <laughs> so, they, so anyway. They'll be like, we're ready to kill the line again. I got just the thing. It never fails. <laughs> oh, man. I'll buy every single one they make. You just you go ahead. To. You would have to. All right. Tell oh, me your thoughts gosh. on Metalhead. Uh, well, obviously, we couldn't disagree more. I, I I love this figure. He's so, so strange. He's so bonkers. He's so out <laughs> there. It's just so much fun. 
Um, so one thing I do want to point out, just in general, that I love is the 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 jetpack, the backpack. If uh, I'll turn it around, there's three pegs on the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, one one female on the back, two male, or you know whatever the better terminology is for it. And then obviously the same thing on the backpack. You have your actual peg, and then two spots for the peg. So that's just way more secure than every other backpack in the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I mean, it's the only one that I can sit here and do this with and hold by his backpack and not feel like it's going to just pop right out. I agree with so, that 100%. Absolutely incredible. This guy is bonkers. He could outshoot a his tank, it looks like. I mean, they have absolutely kitted this dude out. I mean, my vamp is going to go one-on-one with this dude. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, yeah. absolutely wild. I love the little care, the little attention to detail, like the little like deflector under his neck, kind of like armored, uh, trying to keep him safe. Mm-hmm. I, like you had said, I love this helmet. It's it's so unique, and in my universe, I don't know anything about in, anything about this guy. In my universe, he's that guy that's way too into samurais. Like <laughs> he's a white dude. But he's way too into like all of that. Hey man, you watch Ronin on Hulu? It rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because that's kind of the design influence. Like it, it looks like he's just like God, that would be the so only funny. thing. The I only thing look- cooler than Samurai is uh, Russell Crowe and Gladiator. So I put both mm-hmm. those helmets together and I made this thing. Look at how cool it is. I would love to. Right. I could love to see Metalhead watching like Gladiator, and every time their swords hit, he's like, "Bang, bang!" <laughs> <laughs> We're just having great ideas tonight. I'm, um, I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a sweet fanfic when we get done here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Too much Russell Crowe in the fanfic, I think. Um, the only thing I will agree with you on is when you take these these things off on his hip. That peg looks just so out of place. Yeah. Granted, you can take the like the little sleeve off if you if you really had to, I think. Tough call. I think that we have moved forward enough in the last thirty years that we could come up with a better idea than peg on leg. But Well, at least it's peg on sleeve on leg. So oh, if I you didn't, wanted to I didn't realize you can, that. You can I would, take it off. I would never do that because I'm too lazy to take anything apart from a figure ever. But it is nice that that's an option. So I I yeah. take I turn my thumbs down into a sideways thumb. Russell Crow. That's right, a Russell Crow. <laughs> Come full circle. That's right. Um, Keep it all together. I, here I do understand that this is the this is the deluxe figure. So I understand. I don't love the guns. That, like it, It's like if they took the classified line, they got every gun out of the classified line, and they're like, hey, what are your two least favorite guns in the classified line? Uh-huh. This tiny, weirdly scaled assault rifle and this thing. Well, here you go. You're going to have uh-huh. it with this guy. So, I don't know. I couldn't say much. But I do, I do like the figure a whole lot. That, that's uh-huh. really it. I want to talk about one last metalhead thing, and then we'll wrap up. Yes, uh, please, more metalhead. The this is something that the original metalhead suffered from as well, and the way that they explained it is is foolish, but it is part of his like his character. Metalhead has a targeting visor; it's part of his glasses, and when he sees a target, this will depend on comic. He's not really in the comic hardly ever once that I can think of, or twice, but uh, in the cartoon. In the cartoon, he would target something, he would lock onto it, and then he would go, bang, bang. Like, that's a real thing he would do, and the <laughs> missiles would fire. And it's perfectly fine for the crappy G.I. Joe cartoon era, where nothing made sense. And one time, they played a Cobra in a football game to see who would go to jail. Like, okay, fine. But here, in the real world, I feel like this, I feel like Metal Hitch should have some kind of control. Fast Draw has, wears a huge missile launcher pack that has two wires and two guiders, the clickies, for missiles to go. Metalhead should, at the very least, have reused the tooling from Firefly or Scrap Iron for a, some kind of remote detonator. You're shaking your head, Jaron, as if to say, yes, I would want my crazy dumb man to run around the battlefield and yell bang, even though absolutely every single person listening and watching to this show 
is going, hey, Clutch, just yell bang and you will completely screw over your opponent. Um, right away, you it, the force alone of a surprise fire, it like would just push him into the ground. So what I'm saying is, some kind of firing device would have been nice. Doesn't have to have the hose on it. Could have just been a remote. Seems like a Cover Girl also had some kind of data pad. They're literally everywhere. They could have put that hologram that came with the Techno Viper. There's a lot of very easy solutions right here on the table for you to pick and choose from. And also, lastly, Jaren, it would have been optional. It would have made me happy, and you could have just left it, and Zeus could have still been happy. So yeah, but you see, he's got he's got the Amazon Alexa built in. He's bang bang, and he goes bang bang. Yeah, you listen to any rap song produced in the last ten years, and your dad <laughs> just loading up. So. It's a pretty flawed system. I like Metalhead. Metalhead div is the like razor's wire of this guy has a cool is a cool fighty dude, and this guy is absolute <laughs> nutters. But uh, I don't use him a lot. This figure does not do a lot to like reinvigorate him. You know, I say a lot that the figures control what I'm go- what's going on in my play verse. I got the vamp, and I started thinking, and I'm not that the vamp is ever far from my imagination. <laughs> it gets my gets the wheels turning. I get metalhead, and I'm just like, I don't even know where I'll, I'll how, I don't even have a stand that will support this guy. I'll have to put him against a wall, basically, because he's so flipping heavy. <laughs> this has been an interesting episode. This has been a great episode. <laughs> and this has been the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back in two short weeks. We're going to be back on a rise to print or rise. We're at the halfway point, episode three, as we are making our way up to the the animated movie, Jaren's first viewing ever, my 150th viewing ever. I'm just as excited to, for him to see it as I am to watch it again. But we're learning about the origins of Serpentor on the way there, and it's been a great ride. And I hopefully you are joining us for that. Uh, you can reach out to us on social media. Uh, we're on both Twitter and Instagram at anything Joe's pod. And we would love to hear from you. Jaren's doing toy, toy photography on Instagram right now. I'd love to talk to people about anything that we've talked about in this episode. What did the techno vipers do with that gun exactly? And does your techno viper do combat regularly? And if so, buy more vipers. That's what they're there for. Have you picked up any of the classified stuff that we talked about today or the stuff that maybe you're getting the stuff in the mail today that I'm getting the stuff in the mail today, in which case, congratulations we're going to be playing with them at the same time but i'm especially interested in your thoughts on the vamp uh comparison and do you think it's worth the price are you happy with it versus expectations what do you want to see in the future now that we have a little bit of a this is another anchor on the ideas of what exactly do we can we get out of them in terms of size and what you hope is on the plate next we'll revisit all of that and we'll, we'll watch some cartoons on the next episode because anything's available for discussion here on Anything Joe's. Yeah, the hero of me, baby, Storm Shadow. Mm, yeah, that's why y'all fear me, baby. Got a lot of jokes. You got none? Come and share me, baby. G.I. Joe. Got my comic book. Watching cartoon episodes. Watch me going box. Dead stock. Jaren on his toes. Watch me going like a whole new world. You never know. On my freaking block. On my block. Anything Joe. Yo, what's up?